Now in this episode, come along with Dayton and I on another gyro plane flight as we cover one of my favorite maneuvers in all of aviation. All right, so we're gonna do a vertical descent now, okay? Oh, On a previous episode, you guys rode along with me and Dayton on a quick trip to a local grass strip for touch and goes in a Magni M16 gyro plane. On this episode, we'll climb and conduct a vertical descent. Although a gyro plane is similar to a helicopter, they can't hover. Commonly called auto gyros, the name serves its point on how the gyro plane makes its way through the air. From the macro level, a helicopter operates in two primary regimes of flight which are inside and outside of effective translational lift, or ETL. Simply put, ETL is a point where the rotor system of any rotorcraft moves through the air and achieves a certain lateral airspeed to begin the production of lift. As mentioned before, a gyroplane cannot hover and with the exception of a few, there isn't a collective to adjust the pitch in the rotor system. So therefore, a gyroplane must accelerate on the surface through ETL before it can fly away. With this being known, the rotor system is in a condition known as auto rotation 100% of the time of flight. So unlike a helicopter, which requires an immediate reduction of the collective in the event of an engine out scenario, to keep the energy of the blades at a speed high enough to keep the aircraft in flight, a gyroplane is already in auto rotation and all the pilot needs to do is fly the aircraft and find a suitable place to land. Although the gyroplane requires a running start on the surface to become airborne, with a vertical descent, a pilot can put the gyroplane pretty much on a postage stamp. Come along. Oh man. What have I been doing? Why have I missed out on this? <laughs> I forgot how much fun it is. Now let me let me ask you something here real quick. I've got the controls for a moment. Yes, sir. All right. So, so this field under us on the on our that we're just about to pass over. Okay. This one. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it'd be fun to do kind of a low pass over, right? Right. All right. Do you see any reason why we shouldn't? Yeah, there's a power line running right through the middle of it. Exactly, and you can see the poles are in the tree. Yeah. So you can't see the line in the middle no, of the, the field. Sorry, you got the controls. There's also some livestock in there, too. Yep, absolutely. So, but very, very good eye on those, those lines, because yeah. that's, that's a field I like to show all my students. Right. Because it is so, so tempting to fly low over some fields sometimes, and you never know if something like that's in yep. the middle. Yep. The one right. thing I would like to do is do a vertical descent, because that's my favorite maneuver. Okay, yeah, let's uh, actually let's uh, go ahead and pump the power up to about 5,000 RPMs then. Yeah, let's go up there. Now let's get over the ski lake over here on the right. Oh, okay. Clear right, clear right. University of Texas ski team, water ski team, practices there. I bet I can land a float plane there. <laughs> you know, I, that's a good question. I, I doubt it. It takes a lot of room for that PA. Uh, PA-12. It oh, takes it? a lot of room. I can land there. I wouldn't be able to get out. Yeah. Kind of like this thing, you know? You can land in a lot of places you can't get out. That is 100% true. Oh, it's nice and cool up there, dude. Yes, it is. And you talk about beautiful, man. Oh, man. What's the highest you've been in a job? 10,000? 12,000. Okay. Is that when you were going to Cuba? Uh, no, it was actually when we were, uh, it was actually over Georgetown, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a 100 degree day. The only reason I didn't go any higher is because I got too cold. Uh, this is yeah, awesome. Good night. Seven Charlie's about four miles to the southeast and bound for 170. God, that's pretty, man. That's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, you don't get to do this every day, man. No, you don't. Give us a little bit, give us a 180 degree turn to the left. 180 degree turn to the left. Yeah, right down yeah. to the left. Okay, cool. Hey, the traffic is on the left now, wind 417. Hey. Alright, you good with the altitude? 
Yeah, this is good. 5,280. We are now a mile above sea level. Hey, John, plane. Yes, we are. And you can this, this would also be a good, good time to uh, This would be a good time to go over the cloud clearance requirements and what we're talking about. Yeah. How we got up here, you can see plenty of holes in the clouds oh, yeah. here. That's it. Yeah, like you say, it's important to see 1,000 feet above, exactly. 1,000 horizontal, and 500 feet below in class echo airspace. There you go, exactly. And the purpose of that isn't for flying into inadvertent IMC and losing your SA and getting spatial D. The purpose of it is to keep separate from uh, IFR aircraft. Absolutely. So that's a beautiful. And this is a perfect place up here to do, I think. Awesome. All right, so we're going to do a vertical descent now. Okay. So remember, this minimum level flight speed is 25 miles per hour. Okay. So when we get in the middle of this hole here, we're just going to ahead and bring the power back to idle smoothly. And we'll hold 25 miles per hour on our descent down. Roger that. And 25 is a VMCA, correct? Is a VMC, correct. VMC. I'm going to go ahead and bring the power out now. Okay, power's coming to idle. I'm going to just, okay. just keep the nose on the horizon, let the airspeed bleed off. We are clear down and below. All right. All right, looking for no less than 25. We're going to start spinning if you get less than that. Well, not necessarily. With the, go ahead and raise it a little bit more. Okay. And you'll see when it's, you will start losing some rudder authority, slow it down even more. Okay. Keep it a little higher. Okay. There you go. You can feel it starting to spin a little bit, but yeah. you have rudder authority still. So right. um, if it starts, now it's starting to spin more, that's when you just drop the nose drop a little nose bit. Not too much. Or exactly. We don't want to burn over. Exactly. Let's turn to the left just a little bit. Stay away from this cloud. That's right. right. Clear left and down. Boom. Using my trim. All right, oh, man, I love this. This is so awesome, dude. Absolutely. Oh, I love this. Taylor area traffic, experimental gyro 725 Romeo Delta is currently descending through 4,600. We're three miles northwest of the field. Thanks, vertical descent. Taylor area traffic. Oh, I got my airspeed up. That's all right. Down. Sorry about that. Ah, right, you're good. We're cleared down and below. Man, I love this. <laughs> I love this. So awesome. What do you think our rate of descent is right now? Probably at 25 miles an hour, we're probably looking at somewhere around 1,200, 1,300 feet a minute. Cool. At zero, it's 1,500 feet per minute, roughly. Yeah, um, now, that can change uh, a little bit based on uh, uh, different factors. <laughs> well, with this heading right here, at 25 miles an hour, I'm showing 11 knot ground speed. Yep, that sounds about right. With the with the wind blowing. That sounds so about right. The good thing is you can get this thing in almost anywhere. Absolutely. I mean, heck, I'm looking straight down at a spot on the ground and we're barely moving forward, if at all. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And actually, going ahead, if you if you wanted to, you could enter a very pretty tight spiral to hit your spot also. Roger. You don't have to do it, but if you wanted to. No, why not? This is fun. Yeah, sounds good. So go to the left or to the right? We'll make it left. We're clear left. Say okay, clear left and down, okay? So you've got full controllability if you did need to make it to that spot directly under you. Oh, yeah. There's a nice road down there. But like we always say, all roads and rivers have wires, so uh, uh, keep that in mind. Personally, I'll take a, a nice feel over a road any day. Because I don't want to find out at the bottom and not have an option. Absolutely. So I got wires down below crossing that pond. Yep. Let me know if you get dizzy. <laughs> oh, I'm golden, man. Alright, looking out from above. Well, actually, from here we could potentially make it to the runway if we needed to. Probably, huh? Yep. It's amazing feeling the temperature change as we fall. Oh, I know, isn't that cool? Dude, this is a freaking treat. <laughs> it's definitely a different way to fly. It is, and I love it. I do too.
In my opinion, it's the most fun way to fly. I, I love any kind of flying. I do too. Some people ask me, which one do I like more, airplanes or helicopters or general planes? And my answer is yes. Exactly. All of them have their quirks to them. In my opinion, airplanes are probably, uh, at least general aviation airplanes, are just probably the least fun of them when you talk about fun factor. But right. they're so efficient for what they, they do. They are. That's right. They're, they they have their purpose in getting from A to B. That's, now, they are great for that. Now, when we get you on a set of lift lines, I think you're going to change your attitude. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, so we're getting kind of low. I'm going to uh, break it off now. Okay, going ahead and drop the nose first. Okay, drop the nose first. Then yeah. as you add power, a little back pressure on the cyclic. Yeah. Just a little bit. It doesn't take much. There you go. Then All right. Keep on yeah. adding the power in. There we go. There you go. And that's how we don't get in the bundler. That's it. Okay, cool. All right, let's drop it down to 1,100 feet so we stay below the flow of big swing traffic Excellent. coming into Taylor. All right, Taylor traffic, experimental gyro is now one and a half to the west, and we'll be setting up for a 45 downwind entry runway 17. Taylor. Taylor, experimental gyro 725, Romeo Delta, right base runway 17, full stop, Taylor. Yeah, we'll make it a full stop. It sounds good. Gosh, that might help if I get my airspeed up. Tell you what, we're going to play a little game here. What's that? Your runway is the 4,000 foot marker. Okay. The left white stripe. Okay, final clear is clear. We're going to go to that left stripe. 725 Romeo Bill. Final runway 172. Alright, so, right, so that the left stripe on the 4,000 foot marker is your runway. So I want you to set down with the wheels inside of it and stop inside of it. Excellent. I would get us really low and then drag us in using power. Okay. There we go, looking good. Keep those pedals active. Slow down, power out. All the way to idle. All the way. Hold us off, hold us off. Keep holding it up. Ah, oh, we ran into the water, but all's good. Oh, no! <laughs> My eventual goal is to build up my proficiency in the gyro plane with Dayton and one day get my gyro plane CFI add-ons so that I can teach as well. After having a great time flying and catching up with my good friend Dayton, we debriefed, hung out for a little bit, and called it a day. Next week, join Lane and I as we go beach and then land the float plane on a grass strip to go get some brisket at Cooper's. Until next episode, fly safe, Keep learning and never give up on a dream. So long.